The goal of this video is to explore the voting methods of plurality and the board account. Recall from our introductory video that when there are three or more candidates, it is unlikely for a candidate to win with the majority of the votes. So there are a lot of other voting methods that exist, consisting of reasonable ways to choose a winner. However, they each have shortcomings. And our ultimate goal is to examine four of these popular voting systems for three or more candidates. In this video, we're going to focus on just the top two, plurality voting and the board account method. In plurality voting, only the first place votes are considered. So even if a preference list ballot is submitted, remember that's a list showing a voter's first choice, second choice, third choice on down. Even if an entire preference list is submitted, only the voter's first choice will be counted. So it could have just been a single vote cast. And this plurality idea is familiar to us. That's how we elect our leaders uh, in this country. So the candidate with the most votes wins. Note that the winner does not need a majority of the votes, but simply to have more votes than the other candidates. So, for example, in the 2000 election, Florida voters chose Bush over Gore, Nader, and Buchanan um, because he received more votes. So, here's an example of a, um, an election with three possible candidates, A, B, and C, and 13 voters. So, recall how we read this. We would say that five voters have candidate A as their first choice, candidate B as their second choice, candidate C as their third choice while four voters have candidate C as their first choice, candidate B as their second choice, candidate A as their third, so on and so forth. So now the candidate with the most first place votes wins. So we only count each candidate's first place votes. And so in this example, we see that A has the most. A receives five first place votes. B receives a total of four and C also receives four. So since A received the most first place votes, A wins this election. For another example, here we have five candidates, A through E, and eight voters placing their vote. Again, we only focus on those first place votes. So how many votes does candidate A receive? Candidate A receives three first place votes. Candidate B has one, C receives one, D receives one, E receives two. And so since A has the most first place votes, A is our winner. Great, so what are the drawbacks of the plurality method? So there's something called the Condorcet winner criterion. And a voting system is said to satisfy the Condorcet winner criterion provided that for every possible sequence of preference list ballots, either there is no Condorcet winner, as is often the case, the Condorcet winner, remember, beats every other candidate head to head. So either there is no such candidate or the voting system produces exactly the same winner for this election as does Condorcet's method. So we go back to the example we had on the previous video, and we saw that AG was our Condorcet winner. So AG beat every other candidate in a head-to-head -head matchup. Okay, so who would be the winner with plurality? Well, if we only consider first place votes, then the winner of the election would be GB. GB would win using plurality. And so since plurality produced a different winner than our Condorcet winner, then we would say that plurality fails that Condorcet winner criterion. And the, these crazy um, letters that you see here representing candidates do stand for something. So GB uh, stands for George Bush and AG for Al Gore. So this is modeling the 2000 presidential election. RN is Ralph Nader and PB is Pat Buchanan. Um, and so this 2000 presidential election came down to which of George Bush or Al Gore would carry the state of Florida with the final result 
of course, being that George W. Bush won by only a few hundred votes at the slimmest of margins. But Gore was considered the Condorcet winner. It's assumed that if Al Gore was pitted against any one of the other three candidates, Bush, Buchanan, or Nader, just the two of them head-to-head, Gore would have won. And this is the drawback of plurality, that it's possible to win plurality, um, but actually um, not be the Condorcet winner. So another example, or another drawback, excuse me, of plurality is that a voter can only express a preference for his or her one top choice. Um, and there are elections in which it's to a voter's advantage to submit a ballot misrepresenting his or her true preferences. So a voting system is subject to manipulability if there are elections in which it is to a voter's advantage to submit a ballot misrepresenting his or her true preferences. And we'll have a video um, coming down the line um, about manipulability of voting systems. So we'll say more about this later. Okay, so that's the plurality method, though. And the big takeaway is only the first place vote counts. Okay, so our second method that we want to discuss is the board account. Now, often we want to know not just the winner, but who came in second, third, and so on. And so a board account is a rank method of voting that assigns points in a non-increasing manner to the ordered candidates on each voter's preference list ballot, and then adds these points to arrive at a group's final ranking. So if there are N candidates, we could assign points as follows. A first place vote could be worth N minus one point. A second place vote worth n minus two points, and so on, down to that last place vote would be worth no points. And the candidate's total points are referred to as his or her Borda score. So an example of this might be a track meet where a school is awarded five points for any first place finish, three points for a second place finish, two points for a third place, and a single point for a fourth place. So here's an example of the election. We've got three candidates, A, B, and C, and five voters. And so we're going to award points so that each candidate receives two points for every first place vote, one point for every second place vote, and no points for a third place vote. We want to determine the border score of each candidate. So candidate A receives three first place votes, and they get two points apiece for those. And then they get no points for their two third place votes. So A ends up with a border score of six. Candidate B receives one point for the three second place votes and two points apiece for first place votes. So B ends with a border score of seven. Finally, candidate C receives no points for three third place votes and one point apiece for two second place votes. So candidate C's board of score would be two. And now since B has the most points at seven, B wins this election. All right, let's do another example. Here we have eight voters choosing between five candidates, candidate A through E. So we will assign points. Um, each first place vote will be worth four points. A second place vote will be worth three points. A third place vote worth two and a fourth place vote worth one point. So let's see if we can determine the board of score by candidate. I'm gonna do this one a little bit differently. Um, so you can use whichever method you like. So candidate A receives three first place votes and they get four points apiece for each of those. Candidate A receives no second place votes one third place vote, and you get two points apiece for that one third place vote. One fourth place vote for one point. And then candidate A has three fifth place votes, but no points are awarded for fifth place votes. So in total, candidate A has a border score of 15. All right, what about candidate B? So candidate B receives one first place vote for four points four second place votes at three points apiece, no third place votes, two fourth place votes at one point apiece, 
I think candidate B has one fifth place vote, uh, but no points reported for that. So candidate B's board of score would be 18. All right, what about candidate C? So candidate C received one first place vote, no second place votes, four third place votes, two fourth place votes, and one fifth place vote. So candidate C ends up with a board of score of 14. Uh, candidate D, following the same process, has a board of score of 13. And candidate E, a board of score of 17. So our winner using the board account method would be candidate B with a board of score of 18. Okay, so what's the drawback of the board account method? Um, so board account fails something called the independence of irrelevant alternatives. Now a voting system is said to satisfy independence of irrelevant alternatives if it is impossible for candidate B to move from non-winner status to winner status unless at, unless at least one voter reverses the order in which he or she had B and the winning candidate ranked. In other words, if candidate B was a loser, B should never become a winner unless he moves ahead of the winner in at least a single voter's preference list. So let's look at an example. Here we have five voters voting between three candidates A, B, and C. Points would be awarded as we see here. So what would our board of scores be? A would end up with a board of score of six. B would have a board of score of five, and C would have a board of score of four. So A would be the winner. Now, suppose that the last two voters change their ballots. And what they're gonna do is they're gonna leave candidate A alone, but they're just gonna switch candidates B and C. They're gonna reverse the order of the two losers. So this should not change the winner. Um, but let's see what happens. So here's what it looks like. Points again are awarded in the same way. So let's compute our board of scores. A still has a board of score of six because A was not changed at all. Candidate B though now has a board of score of seven and candidate C a board of score of two. So B went from loser to winner, but was never moved above A, above the original winner on any of the ballots. And so we would say that the board account method fails to satisfy the independence of irrelevant alternatives. So that's all for this video. We'll explore um, two other voting systems in our next video. Thanks, guys. Bye.